Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, it's good to be here. Uh, in previous years, I've looked at more traditional war risk subjects, particularly piracy. Uh, this year, I thought that I would do something different, so I'm going to look at uh, ship detentions arising from smuggling allegations. It's quite a topical area because there was a, an interesting uh, English Supreme Court decision earlier this year on just such a case. This is what I'm going to have a look at. So cover, if your ship is detained uh, as a result of smuggling allegations, what, what cover, insurance cover have you got? What exclusions might there be? When we think about drug smuggling allegations and ship detentions, we tend to think <coughs> of South America, particularly Venezuela. I'll have a brief look at Venezuela. The case that I mentioned is called the B Atlantic. I'll talk about the facts and the court decision and the insurance implications of that decision. And then I've got a couple of uh, slides on loss prevention uh, advice. So, looking at the cover, uh, this is the Hellenic cover for, for ship detention risks then. Um, so the owner of an entered ship is insured if the loss, damage or expense is caused by capture, seizure, arrest, restraint or detainment. This type of case would be particularly thinking about detainment, detention. Or any person acting maliciously or from a political motive. Or confiscation or expropriation. So, in order for your war risk policy to respond, you're going to have to come within one of those insured perils. That's the Hellenic cover, but a market policy from Lloyd's would be on a very similar wording. We've got some exclusions. Um, an owner is not insured for any loss arising out of action taken by any state or public or local authority under the criminal law of any state or on the grounds of an alleged contravention of the laws of any state or ordinary judicial process. So if you're in breach of a state's law or its due process, then that's going to be excluded. That's, that wouldn't bring it within the, within the war risk. Venezuela. Venezuela is, a, is a, an additional premium area. This is an extract from the Hellenics AP map. Uh, on the coast, it's declarable. So you've got to declare it uh, uh, to the Hellenic uh, or your market underwriter. But there's no premium. We don't charge a premium for port calls on the Venezuelan coast. If the ship is going inland though, Maracaibo or up the Orinoco, then a premium would be charged. Uh, Venezuelan law on drug smuggling in particular, what are the aspects? Well, first of all, long sentences for those found guilty. The ship may be held for three months until there's a preliminary hearing. At the preliminary hearing, the judge may set the matter down for a full criminal trial, and that can take up to a year or even more. If the final judgment demands seizure, then the property in the ship will transfer to the Venezuelan state. The other thing to note is that the local courts in Venezuela don't normally allow release until final judgment. So you're not necessarily going to be able to get the ship away on the basis of the provision of security. The other thing to note is that the judges and the prosecutors themselves will be punished if they're in violation of the law. So um, the judges and the prosecutors are extremely careful to follow the letter of the law. The other type of smuggling cases that we see in Venezuela from uh, occasionally are oil smuggling cases. This arises because there's a huge difference in the price of oil internally in Venezuela from the international price, which might tempt criminals to illegally export oil. 
This is the, uh, the topical case that I mentioned. Uh, she's called the Bee Atlantic. Uh, it's not, uh, the Hellenic isn't involved uh, or wasn't involved with this one. Uh, I, I don't think she's actually a, a Greek ship. Um, the incident was back in 2007. So she's a bulk carrier. She was loading coal in Lake Maracaibo bound for Italy. Uh, the, the facts are a bit more complicated than, I, than I've said out there. But basically the authorities conducted an underwater inspection and they found three bags strapped to the hull uh, containing cocaine. The ship was detained and the crew were arrested. Uh, ultimately, uh, two crew members, it was the, uh, the master and another officer, were convicted by the Venezuelan, Venezuelan courts and, and they were given nine years imprisonment. The owners abandoned the ship after two years and ultimately the ship was confiscated pursuant to a court order. As I say, the ship wasn't insured with the Hellenic. Uh, she was on a London market policy, but the Hellenic wording would be, would be very similar. The crux of this case is all about that top bullet point there. Can an owner claim a constructive total loss in respect of detention by customs due to drug smuggling allegations? The owner's argument was that the detention arose due to a malicious act of the drug cartel. The underwriters, on the other hand, denied liability. They said that the proximate cause was the infringement of customs regulations, which was excluded. At first instance, uh, the commercial court found in the owner's favour. On appeal, they reversed the decision they found in the, under, uh, the underwriter's favour. It went to the Supreme Court and they issued their decision during the summer this year. And their ruling was, attempted smuggling is not a malicious act. The drug cartel didn't wish any harm to the ship or the crew. They wished the ship all the very best. They wanted it to make the voyage. <laughs> and, and, and when you think about it, that's, uh, that's probably right. So, uh, no cover. Um, the, the Supreme Court went on to say, well, actually, even if there was a malicious act, the exclusion is going to apply anyway. So, conclusion of this B Atlantic is, Smuggling of drugs and contraband is not a war risk. So, if you haven't got cover under, un, under your war risk policy, where do you look? First off, let's have a look at P&I cover. Then, if you look at the international group cover for fines, uh, there's um, uh, the ability to provide compensation for confiscation of a ship uh, due to infringement of customs law or customs regulations. There's some issues with the P&I cover though. First is it's discretionary, so it's not as of right. Secondly, the owner has to show that he took all reasonable steps to prevent the infringement. So what precautions did the owner take? And the third element is that recovery from P&I won't exceed the market value. It's not insured value, so there may be a shortfall on your insured value. What other co co uh, covers are out there? Then contraband war loss of higher insurance. This is something that the Hellenic provides as an additional insurance, but it's available on the market as well. Um, it's a worldwide cover. Uh, you pay an annual premium, there's no APs, so if you go to an AP area there's no additional premium. So it covers delay by reason of detainment by a government uh, as a result of contraband being found on board. It works in exactly the same way as loss of higher insurance, so you agree a daily rate, 5,000, 10,000 a day, whatever you want, and a period of time. Um, the thing about this contraband wall loss of higher insurance is that it's extremely cheap at the moment. It's based on a multiple of the annual premium. And our annual premiums at the moment are tiny. So you can cover uh, contraband wall loss of higher insurance for a ship for we're talking two or three hundred dollars per annum only. But it only covers the loss of time. It doesn't cover the loss of ship. If you're looking to 
cover the loss of the ship itself, then what you need to be looking for is something called ship seas cover. It's available on the market. It would indemnify you for the loss of the ship if drugs are discovered on board. It pays the difference from whatever you might collect from the P&I club and the insured value. Hellenic doesn't offer this at the moment, but we're looking in to see whether we should do, so watch this space. Finally, just a couple of slides on loss prevention measures. Um, uh, it's all about being vigilant, uh, keeping a good lookout, uh, keeping the ship well lit on board and over the side. Diving inspections. When I was down here on the P&I side, several owners used to organize diving inspections before their ships would leave the berth in Venezuela. Regular shipboard inspections. Warning the crew. If they're going ashore and they're having a few beers, they need to be careful about who they're befriending. Um, limit control uh, access to the ship. Consider the use of third party uh, security guards from an approved supplier. And it's not just about carrying out these activities, it's about recording the activities so if you need to, you can evidence that they've actually been done. If drugs are found on board, then respond in accordance with the ship's security plan. Notify the local authorities. If you don't notify the, uh, the, the local authorities and it comes to their attention, the, the implication is that you're bound up in it in some way. Don't touch the drugs. We don't want the, uh, the officer or the, or the crew's fingerprints on the packages. Photograph, video the area. If possible, seal it to prevent unauthorized access. Inform your P&I and the local correspondent so that you can mobilize some local assistance. That was a, uh, a PhD subject in under 12 minutes. Um, you, can, you can all collect your doctorate certificates from Apostolus uh, at the end of the seminar. I'm just joking on that. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. <clears throat>